Hello, this is Linda Carboneau, and welcome to another edition of Walking Through Life. Today, my guest is Phil Sharp, and Phil is a jazz musician, and you have a mental you have mental illness too. Yes, I do. And I think I want to let the audience know that you've got such a great story and so much in the story that um, we can't do this all in one setting. So we're going to have you come back and do different segments of your story, which I think would be wonderful. And I'm really grateful that you're willing to do that. So I think today we want to basically let you talk about what you would like to talk to. Okay. What I'd like to talk about today is what's guided me through my life and been a beacon of hope for me, and that's my music. And in 1987, we were building the first musical computers over at New England Digital, which is a building, a couple buildings up, and they were huge computers. One was a music production device called the Synclavier and the other was a digital recording device called the direct -to disc And I took an interest in, when I was around 22, I, I wanted to really learn the piano because the piano, you could play all the different sounds, all the different in instruments on it. So I, I started piano at 22 and I learned to play it pretty good. So my CD here, Catatonic Reaction, I played all the parts on the keyboard and then the parts I, I wanted to go faster, I sped up with the computer so it sounds like I can really got some piano technique when it's actually the computer going faster. And this was my first CD and I made that in 1992. And I got a lot of good feedback from it. So I'm sure you enjoy it. It's, it's available at all the stores. It's iTunes and Amazon and CD Baby puts it out there for $5. So that was that one. I want to talk a little bit about what type of music it is. Too. Okay. So it's jazz music. It's, it's jazz music. It's, you know, from the time I was a little kid, at nine years old, I used to play these licks and improvise and you know, it led me into jazz. My, my father took me to the nightclubs in New York City to listen to Dizzy Gillespie and wow. Jerry Mulligan and Dexter Gordon. And he took me, you know, he really treated me special. My dad, I love my dad and my dad loved me. And he wanted me to be the best I could be at playing the horn. And so he did that for me. Um, I, I want to say too, because I listened to both the um, they're they're great. And I, one, of the thing, one of the things that I found that I was using the music for, of course, it's great for dinner music or, you know, um, just uh, relaxing, relaxing. And it, it has a way of, uh, I believe, bringing the stress level down. Like if you're really stressed and you pop that CD in, you can kind of relax and bring the stress down. It's just wonderful music. I'm really encouraged by your music. I like it a lot. Well, I feel about this music, Catatonic Reaction, it's high energy but it, it really gives you a feeling of what it what it's like to have a catatonic reaction because I did have one and it's you know it, it really gives you the feeling of it you know <laughs> and this other one here the ultimate this is a little more mellow mm -hmm. it's got me singing on it and I actually played the bass on it I played it learned how to play the bass too just to learn about the lower parts of the music, you know, the, what the bass plays is a little different than the melody line, which is played by the horn. And what I didn't mention too was I was a bus driver for 20 years. Now, somebody told me that, that you drove yeah. bus. Was that you drove um, from like Hanover to Boston? Right? I drove almost every bus in the Upper Valley. I wow. drove. I drove for uh, Hanover and Norwich. I drove for Hartford. I drove Advanced Transit. Mm -hmm. I drove for years to Logan, in and out of Logan. And I really, I really had a good thing going with uh, Dartmouth Coach because I used to get on the microphone and say, you know, <laughs> you can take a few of my CDs. Yeah, with that's the a good, yeah. <laughs> with, the, with the travel and. Yeah. And people really loved that, and they yeah. referred to me as a musician. So, yeah. and the kids, 
the kids loved the, this CD. You know, they were the inspiration. They said, "Phil, you got to put out another one. You got to put out another one." So then, it took me about 12 years later in 2000. I put this out in '92. Yeah. So then, in in 2005, I put this one out, and I, I they're both my best my best horn plans on those CDs and. People have always thought a lot of the horn saxophone playing that I've done. Oh, and, it's wonderful. And I and you know, I really it's really helped me deal with my mental illness. It's really helped me cope with it, the the amount of music I've had in my life. And and family, you know. Yeah. That's those are some of the so Basically, one of the one of the tools that you've used in your life with your mental illness has been music. Yes, it is. It is. When I feel stressed out, it makes see stress brings on the disease. It right. starts it out. You know, mm -hmm. if you get stressed out, you know, and uh, the music for me has just really allowed me to to calm down and relax and to kind of escape. From from what's going on, you know. I could totally I could totally hear that in the music because that's what it did for me too. Yeah. Just like you know, just get this get the stress, get those feelings back down to a mellow, safe, you right. know, really stress reduction. I mean, I think you I I think you would uh, be great at uh, making relaxation music with the saxophone stuff yeah. that you do. I think you should look into that, honestly. Really? <laughs> yeah, I do. <laughs> But I want to make sure that people know that we are going to get a treat today, and you are going to play the horn for us a little bit. Um, so we're going to we're going to let you do that. But we also want to make sure that people know that you're going to be coming back on Walking Through Life and do much more talking about mental illness because you've got some great ideas. Right. So in sharing, and I, that, I, I really want to communicate the misunderstanding of what it's like to have mental right. illness. I think. You know, the society, you know, every time there's somebody who, you know, kills a bunch of people, oh, he's a crazy man. You know what I mean? That's the kind of image that they that, got, that yeah, gets absolutely. pumped out there, and it's so wrong. You right, know? right. And uh, I want to help change that, you know. Ah, uh, well, Phil, you know what? Yeah, I even know I'm a drip in the pond. <laughs> you know what well, I mean? you, know, you know what, though? It's sometimes but, it takes those drips to, to you know, to really get the word out there, you know, yeah. because people, you know, a lot of people don't understand it, but they'll tell you there's a lot of there people that do. A lot of do. people are afraid of it, you know. Exactly. They're, they're so how are we going to get them unafraid? By educating them, by telling our stories, by right. using our voices in, the, in that way. So I'm encouraged that you are going to come back and talk about those things. Yeah, too. I will. Okay. But well, we're going to start right now and let you play. When I'm feeling stressed out and down and life's getting the best of me, I always can pick up my horn or play the piano and I just play ideas that kind of just come to my head like <laughs> idea I like I write it down and if I want to keep it and put it into one of my CDs or whatever I start out you know I start out with a lick so that's so that was that was good you just kind of thought of that up in your head right I have the ideas in my head all almost all the time we you got know. we got a choo-choo going by yeah but that's okay they can They'll, uh, it won't sound in the sound courtroom anyway. But I thought it was wonderful. I mean, just those few notes, you know. Uh, what was going through your head when you were playing them? Was there a specific? Well, I, I have the sound of the horn in, in my head almost all the time, you know. Oh. I, mean, I have to focus. It's always there, though. I yeah. got to, you know, think about it and say, okay, I got to play it. But I've done it my whole life. It just comes from Well, you just gave us a little bitty taste. Right. I just said. <laughs> So we're going to have to do a show you know, just with you so, playing the saxophone, so, too. Yeah. You know, it's, I just want people to check out my music. And, and I actually, 
I given a lot of CDs away, you know. Yeah. I mean, yep. as part of like I dro drove the buses and I gave them away on the school buses and the kids really loved them. And like I say, sometimes I'd drive all the way to Logan and I'd come back and I would have given away one CD and I said the trip was worth it. You know? Yeah. Because you know, so yeah. I'll That's how I felt about my music, I, I, you know. And I want to hook you up with a friend of mine too that actually does a TV show from his establishment where he has musicians come in and play their music. So I'd love to have you go and meet him too and be interviewed and I'd love to do, do some more music with him. Yeah. So, so. but uh, we are going to we have to set you up on a schedule so you can come back. I don't know what your schedule is like when you can. I'm help. pretty open. Yeah. To, yeah. This yeah. time's good for me if you want me to come back at 10:30. Then. Okay. So I got. I, you know, I, there's a lot of things I'd like to talk about. That's what know? I'm saying. And what we'll do is we'll hook you up with the uh, with Mark so that you can uh, go there and play some music too, um, and then come here and talk more about mental illness and some of the coping skills and okay. things like that. If that'd be okay. Yeah. So, it. Uh, it takes a, it takes a family. It takes a village. You know, it takes people. It takes yourself too. It takes yeah, you it, get, it takes your desire to get better, to everyone. want to want help right. to go on and re reach out. Yeah. You know. So me and you've got so much in common in that area. So, you know, yeah. that we can we can really openly talk about it. And sometimes that's hard for people. I mean, I people, people, people that don't want to reach out, it's, it takes more work to right. get to them. But you got to reach in and get them, too. That's you right. know what I mean? You can't leave them on the street, right. you know, in my opinion. Yeah. You know, it's well, not. Phil, it's been absolutely wonderful having you on Walking Through the Light today. And I look forward to doing some more work with you. So, um, But anyway, we are just about out of time. So I didn't know if maybe you had a quick little message that you would like to say to the audience before we wrap up. Uh, check out my music on, on Amazon and CD Baby and iTunes and it's all there. All you can just get one, check it out, one song and or you can download the whole CDs and for that's been my uh, guiding force. So that's where I'd like to leave it for today. Thank you, Phil. And my message today would be is that, you know, check out more shows. You know, we've got um, Phil going to be coming back and talking about some more issues, which I think is wonderful. And I want to encourage anybody that's, that's willing or would like to use their voice and, and do similar things like this to give me a call or, um, or email me and let me know what you're interested in. So my email address is walklife at comcast.net. And you can call me at one eight zero two. Two nine five zero nine nine seven. So this is Linda Carbono and Phil Sharp signing off for Walking Through Life today. We'll see you next time. Bye bye.